Did Paul actually convert to Christianity? The late Dr. Christer Stendhal of Harvard Divinity School suggests that he did not. How did he come to that conclusion? That's what we'll talk about here today on Bible History. Now before we jump into his argument, I just want to give you some background about Dr. Christer Stendhal. Dr. Christer Stendhal was born in 1921 in Stockholm, Sweden and died in April 2008. He received his doctorate in 1954 and then was on faculty at Harvard Divinity School for 30 years and he was the Dean of Harvard Divinity School during the late 60s and 70s. Starting in 1984, he served as Bishop of the Lutheran Church in Stockholm, Sweden for four years and then went on to teach at Brandeis University, a, a Jewish university, before he retired. Today, we will be discussing a portion of an essay found in Dr. Stendhal's book, Paul Among Jews and Gentiles, which was published by Fortress Press in 1976. And this is one of those books where pretty much if you've read a book on Paul since then, since 1976, you'll find this in the footnotes and the bibliography cited somewhere, most likely. It just made a huge impact on Pauline scholarship and uh, the argument that I'll be discussing from the book is a, was one of the big reasons why. The essay we'll talk about today is called Call Rather Than Conversion. And in this essay, Dr. Stendhal proposes this thesis. Rather than being converted, Paul was called to the specific task, made clear to him by his experience of the risen Lord, of apostleship to the Gentiles, one handpicked through Jesus Christ on behalf of the one God of Jews and Jews. Gentiles. So Dr. Stendhal is saying that rather than say that Paul converted from Judaism to Christianity, it's more accurate to say that Paul was called to apostleship. Now a common counter-argument to that claim that Paul didn't convert from Judaism is Galatians 1, 13 through 16. For you have heard of my former life in Judaism how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people, so extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and had called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles. And so they really point out that first sentence there where it says, former life in Judaism. That seems pretty clear, you know. Former life means that he's no longer in that life of Judaism. So Dr. Stendhal does something pretty interesting. So he does what I call Stendhal's reversal, is he uses this text, Galatians 1, 13 through 16, as his foundational evidence that it would be better to describe Paul's transformative experience as a call rather than conversion. And we'll actually take a look at a scholar who does use Galatians 1, 13 through 16 in this context next time so you can get an idea of what both sides are saying. Stendhal wants us to pay attention to three comments Paul made in this account he wrote in Galatians. And they are that God set him apart before he was born. He was called by God through his grace. He was given a mission to preach among the Gentiles. So what is so significant about these comments? Dr. Stendhal points out that the way Paul describes his own experience is pretty much in the exact same language the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah describe their own transformative experience. So let's take a look a little bit more in depth. Let's compare Paul's words with Jeremiah and Isaiah so you could get a really clear picture of what Dr. Stendhal is talking about. And so let's start with number one that Paul claimed that God called him from before he was born out of grace, not because of anything he accomplished, to take on a specific calling, which mirrors some passages in Isaiah. And those passages are Isaiah 49.1 and Jeremiah 1.5. So let me read those for you. Isaiah 49.1 Listen to me, O coastlands, and hearken, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. 
he named my name. Then here's Jeremiah 1, 5a. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. And so again, that's just like what Paul says in Galatians 1, that God set him apart before he was born. So now the second claim, which is that Paul saw himself as being called to a mission to the nations, to the Gentiles, to the non-Jewish people, which mirrors Isaiah 49.6 and the second half of Jeremiah 1.5. Isaiah 49.6, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. And then Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. So in light of these similarities, Dr. Stendhal concludes this. Thus, in Galatians, Paul describes his experience in terms of a prophetic call similar to that of Isaiah and Jeremiah. It thus becomes clear that the usual conversion model of Paul the Jew who gives up his former faith to become a Christian, is not the model of Paul, but of ours. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, Stendhal doesn't stop there. So he not only looks at Paul's account in Galatians, but he steps over to the book of Acts and sees how Luke describes it from an outsider's point of view. And much in the same way, he argued from comparison between Galatians and Isaiah and Jeremiah for Paul's account, He'll argue from comparison between Luke's account and Isaiah, Jeremiah. But I think the most striking one, which is the one I'll talk about today, is between a portion of Acts 26 and Ezekiel 1 and 2. I'll go ahead and read Acts 26, 16 through 18 for you. Paul sees a light from heaven and hears the voice of the Lord saying, Rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and bear witness, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles, to whom I send to open their eyes, that they may turn from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And then you'll hear the very similar language being spoken in Ezekiel 128 and 2 verses 1 and 3. Like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard the voice of one speaking, Stand upon your feet. I send you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels. So reading that, Stendhal makes this observation. In this passage, Acts 26, 16-18, the vision and call of the prophet Ezekiel are recalled, virtually a direct reference to Ezekiel 128, in which there is a visionary experience, a prostration, and subsequently a voice of the Lord. So they both saw a light, they both fell to the ground, and they both heard the voice of the Lord giving them their call, giving them their mission. And like I said, Dr. Stendhal, he goes over a few other examples, but I thought that was really the most striking one when you're looking at the accounts Luke gives and the prophets. So Stendhal actually summarizes his argument on pages 10 and 11, and he says it in this way. If then we use the term conversion for Paul's experience, we would also have to use it of such prophets as Jeremiah and Isaiah. Yet we do not speak of their conversion, but rather of their call. Paul's experience is that of a call to a specific vocation, to be God's appointed apostle to the Gentiles. It is a call to a mission rather than a conversion. So I think this is actually a pretty interesting point that Dr. Stendhal makes. If we don't say that Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel converted from Judaism to another religion, and Paul describes and sees his own experience much in the same way as do his contemporaries, then why do we say that he converted from Judaism? So I think it's pretty compelling, um, but 
you know, some people might go, ah, who cares, you know, this is just word games, everybody knows that he converted and, and all this stuff, you know, just like, it's all semantics, right? Well, Dr. Stendhal, he points out a few problems with this, and I'll, I'll give you two of them. He says this, the term conversion easily causes us to bring into play the idea that Paul changed his religion. The Jew became a Christian, but there is ample reason to question such a model. To begin with, people in those days did not think about religions. And furthermore, it is obvious that Paul remains a Jew as he fulfills his role as an apostle to the Gentiles. And then Dr. Stendhal, he gives another reason why using the word conversion is a problem. Paul never refers to himself as I the Christian, but constantly as I the apostle to the Gentiles. And so this point is kind of simple. Paul never called himself a Christian. Paul never said he converted. He did say he was called to an apostle to the Gentiles. So why don't we just use the same language that he did? I think that's a pretty good reason to avoid using the word conversion and use the word call. And so in review, did Paul actually convert from Judaism to Christianity? According to Dr. Christopher Stendhal, a more appropriate description would be that Paul was called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. This is because Paul and Luke describe Paul's transformative experience in the exact same terms as Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel describe their own. So if the experiences these Jewish prophets had cannot be described as conversions from Judaism, how can we describe Paul's experience as a conversion? Do you agree with Dr. Stendhal? Leave a comment below to share your thoughts. We would love to hear from you. If you would like to receive updates whenever we come out with new videos, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you would like to follow us on social media, the links can be found in the description. Thank you for joining us today on Bible History.